morning everyone today it's gonna be a, a three-part video again I think I will make these Mondays like that <clears throat> three parts videos Mondays the rest of the week will be just one single video a day but uh, this morning I'm going for a job and actually I'm going for two job interview this morning so I won't waste my entire day Actually, those are a job interview where people actually need me and a decent salary, hopefully. So, uh, where I'm going right now is for something that I'm already doing. Uh, I'll be powder coating, assisting the guy that's doing the powder coating, the painter and doing some assembly and other work and the lady says twenty dollars an hour so that sounds very interesting and um, i'm looking forward to see if they have any benefit uh, because here in quebec uh, when the company is offering uh, medical and dental uh, yearly on your income tax you're going to save like seven hundred dollars because you have those at work you already pay for and uh, the last year where I worked I didn't have any where I work currently anyways I didn't have any uh, medical coverage or anything like this so now I have an extra $700 to pay which I could have done without stupid fucking income tax trap so yesterday I managed to work on my car I installed the rear uh, the rear backup light which is like a LED bar this wide and uh, it's one I bought last year and uh, I'm gonna do more work now that the good weather is back and uh, also one of the big issue where I live right now is the parking lot where I am is next to the building and there's another building apartment complex where I live just behind so what happened is like as I'm working on my things people passing behind me and passing around me and near me and uh, I hate that when people are getting too close to my things you know I have like uh, four thousand worth of tools four thousand dollars worth of tools and uh, parts and inventory and uh, most of these things when I'm working they're just lying around lying there and uh, as my head is down on my truck or my vehicles uh, somebody to just come around and pick a tool and leave and I wouldn't notice at all until I need that tools so this is why I hate working at home I don't hate it so much that everything is nearby and I have everything all I need and, and I had my hands disposal but the problem is it's a pain in the ass when I have to carry inside and outside my tools and I have to worry about someone being dishonest. That's why like if I buy a if I would be fortunate enough to buy a house, it would need to have a garage where I could store all my things and actually work peacefully. But last week uh, one thing came around very well and uh, the guy uh, I met a guy who is a businessman on the South Shore and he owns uh, apartment buildings and other stuff. And he has this huge ass garage, like 5,000 square feet. He has nine cars stored in that garage. And he told me that uh, he could lend me, he, he could rent me the space for like $500 a month. So that would be very good because I could turn that $500 around a month very fast. Uh, one job per weekend, and usually a job per weekend is 350. So that's good ranking. 350 in one day, it's not bad when you're a single guy uh, working on, a, on, on electronics. But uh, the end goal this year is to slow down my work and I don't want to do more. Uh, I'm already going to have a new job where I need to focus and work hard and I want to enjoy my weekend. So if I have, if I have one of these two jobs, I don't need extra income anymore. 
I'll be able to just rest on that job. But I'm gonna have to call him back and uh, see uh, when I could do some work on his cars. Because he wanted, he wanted me to do some uh, LED install on his uh, on his minivan, on his Dodge Caravan, and uh, he didn't call me back at all. Like from Friday to from Friday to this weekend, he didn't call me at all. So I took it that he was very busy, so I didn't bother with him. But uh, this week I'm gonna call him back because uh, I can use that extra money. Last week was was very slim. Last week I did all week of work, except very short days. One half day. Ah, my back. I can't wait to see uh, what these two jobs gonna be like. The other one, uh, the, this one where I'm doing right now, it's uh, the same thing I'm doing at what I where I'm right now for two dollar more per hour. So I, I know what to expect. I just don't know how big the parts and how heavy the parts are. It's gonna be my job description. At the other place, it's a it's a battery company. They make a battery for electric cars. It's a well-established company. So they have like tons and tons of benefits, and it's a big place. It's very clean. It's there's AC and all kinds of good thing over there. But usually, what I've learned from working with Schneider Electric is that when you have a good salary and it's a big company there's some quirk that comes with it and it's not always positive it's, it's not always something you're looking forward to wow these guys really work hard this weekend the place is almost ready to install the stupid tramway I guess the tramway is going to be on the road level because uh, I don't see any higher structure for that tramway thing it's a uh, they're planning to, uh, with the new bridge that they're building, the new Champlain Bridge, they're planning to have this stupid tramway there. Uh, it's going to be like a, an outside metro rail that's not even finished. It's like they didn't construct the thing already. And uh, they, wanna, they, wanna, they want to have this replacing all the bus on the South Shore that goes to Montreal. And that's just, it's a technical impossibility because you need the bus on the South Shore. So here, they have the structure that goes over the highway. As you'll see here, you see those T things in the back. There and there. So these, these structures, it's where they're gonna go over the other pass, uh, over the highway. But the question is, uh, that stupid tram, ram, whatever they're gonna call it, the ram, uh, is it gonna tolerate the winter? When there's gonna be like six, seven inch or twelve inch of snow on the railroad track, it's gonna be like a stupid idea. Because the the new uh, the new bridge that they're making, it's gonna be like four, uh, three lanes highway on one side, three lanes highway on the other side, and the middle is gonna be like for the bus. It was it was supposed to be for the bus, but now it's that stupid tramway. And the problem with that is. Montreal, the amount of people that are taking the bus night and uh, morning and uh, evening during the rush hour, it's so it's so vast. There's so many people that it would create a huge clutter of people at the bus terminus. And I don't know what's their idea of canceling the bus and carrying 100,000 people a day down straight downtown piece by piece and they want to shove those 100,000 of people and six, seven different tram tra tramways, whatever. So I, I don't see how the logic managed to think about this and say like, oh yeah, there's going to be enough, blah, blah, blah. You, you'll need, you'll, you'll basically need one train after the other, one one inch from the others in order to carry all those people downtown. It doesn't make sense. The bus were fine. It's 110,000 people a day, morning and night, that goes downtown. So it is this, it's the stupidest thing that I ever heard that they want to cancel this system that 
that's been in places for 30 plus years by like single railroad tracks and a tramway, electric tramway. Plus, the problem with that stupid electric tramway is that in the winter, uh, it's gonna require twice as much as electricity to keep it warm. Warm is motor, keep this motor warm and then inside people are gonna freeze because it's it's already cold as it is when you're inside a bus and you have a diesel engine generating like 32,000 BTU to warm up the inside of the bus and just imagine something that's 100 meter long uh, 10, 10 bus long and you have to generate this much electricity to generate electricity uh, you need to consume this much electricity to generate that much each that much heat so it's a really really stupid idea and the worst of all is like nobody came to object that and says it's not viable it's not it's not a good idea no matter how much you make that train or that tramway or whatever I call it a tramway because the tramway is an outside metro and runs in an electricity that's and the electricity is fixed on the ground. So, I don't know. People in power ever too often, when they take decisions, they don't analyze things with technical views. Or they're gonna take the opinion of a civil engineer that's gonna say yes to anything, as long as he has a check under his nose. Instead of happy asking people uh, that thinks outside the box for a logic reason. For me, it always amazed me. When, uh, when I used to work at Trimble, and uh, we came out with a new design for a new road scan system. And the box, the way the box was made was in a way that was a big drag. It was shaped like this. You know when you put your hands outside in the wind and you do like this and there's a huge drag? Well, that's exactly how the system was. It was dragging so much that it took 25% of the horsepower of the car engine or the truck engine to drag it along the road. You couldn't exceed 100 kilometers per hour. You were at maximum rev on your vehicles. And I told them a million times that we could just alter the design and make it down slope as it would follow the vehicle roof line and we could even use cheap aluminium and instead of modifying the, 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 the fiberglass shell we could just bolt it on on what was already there and it would improve the performance but they, they never listened to my, to my reasoning to my logic they only did that two years after they came out with the system and they had tons and tons of problem, uh, problems and after that, when they started noticing that my reasoning was more logical than theirs, then they made me uh, an official uh, help at the R&D department. And they say, uh, we, we won't make a decision or a design step without asking you first in the future. And that's like seven years after they hired me. And of course, back then my skill level was at a certain level, so it wasn't so bad. But if it was today, it would be flawless. Right now, the two companies where I'm going to, there, there isn't much where I, I could improve anything because I don't work in refrigeration. I don't make frigidaire. I don't make a, I don't work in that field, so I'm just there to do the job. But uh, the battery department, the battery company where I'm going at, um, neither, like I'm not familiar with uh, lithium ion. It's not a power source I'm, I'm familiar with. I know it's highly explosive, but I don't know much of its range and its power compared to a NICAD or lead acid. <clears throat> so it took me 15 minutes to get to Shambi. Oh, not so bad. It's about the same time it takes me to go out to actually go to my work. But now I have an extra four kilometers to go on the boulevard industry, the industrial boulevard. Boy, it would be good if they put a dip in around here or a gas station. So, 
neither company where I'm going right now, I feel like I could do anything. I'm gonna do my job and I'm gonna do what I'm asked for because for the sake that I need a job, but it's not some place where I can contribute. Oh well, the other one I don't know if there's anything I can contribute. I'll see once I discuss with her. I know that the lady that I interviewed me, uh, she was very, very enthusiastic about getting me there. And she asked me if I had an high school diploma. And I told her, like, no, I do not have a high school diploma. And I say, uh, all the certification that I had before were burned in a house fire. And I never went back to get them. And um, when it comes to high school and when I was in the army, uh, it was the equivalent uh, of the high school. So when I was in the army, I had uh, six six months that they pay me of uh, getting uh, getting back to high school and having all the quick learning methods that they had. And I had the equivalent of the high school diploma from the army. And when I went to work at Schneider, uh, they needed also a high school diploma about that but they say company policy is so that you need that so what they did they gave me a test a French a French test and a math test and they say these two tests are the basic equivalents to in order to have your high school diploma and if you pass these two tests we can hire you so I did the test I fill it up and uh, I pass uh, I didn't pass with flying college but I passed barely and uh, she said, like, well, that's pretty good. Like, you have the equivalent. So you're not that bad. So they did hire me. And just to quit, like, two, less than three months later. <clears throat> so right now I'm in Chambly. And uh, I work here twice. And that uh, that neighborhood where I am. And uh, this this place changed so much since the time I was here. Boy, what? Five thirty a.m. was too hard, too early to wake up. Anyway, it's gonna be a long video today. So. If you liked the video I made last week, or if it wasn't exp uh, explanatory enough, uh, please uh, please tell me, and I'll uh, redo it the better way. Because I did it in French, and um, it was very long, and it was very it, w it was well thought out. But when I'm doing it in English, was uh, I had I had a very short time to do it. Uh, the 15 minutes it takes me to get to work. So, if you feel like I need to redo that video and uh, explain myself better, please let me know. The the one where I'd say, uh, why is our world in that state today? On this note, I wish you all a good day and I will report in about, about around 10 o'clock. See you later.